What a beautiful day. Oh, they're pretty. Yeah. Nicola just loved the bright colors. I, I don't know that there was a particular kind that she liked. But you know the yellows and the pinks. Yeah, I mean, and at just this gorgeous. time of year, yeah, yeah. just right. gorgeous. Sally Goddard is talking about her oldest, her firstborn, Nicola. I think Nicola's love of flowers probably came from my mother, who always had flowers in the house. It was a sign of summer it was a sign of just beauty I think but these days they are also a sign of remembrance because Nicola Goddard Captain Nicola Goddard has been gone more than 10 years now it was May 17 2006 the crew commander and her unit found themselves in a firefight on the outskirts of Kandahar in Afghanistan. Their LAV-3 was hit by two rocket-propelled grenades. At the age of 26, barely two weeks after her birthday, Captain Nicola Goddard was gone. Her unit, a tight-knit group, helped carry her home. People line the highway of heroes to say goodbye. The Canadian forces lost another soldier in combat. Captain Nicola Goddard is the 17th Canadian to die in Afghanistan. As the first Canadian woman to die in combat, hers was a very public death. Her funeral aired live across the country on national television. Her father, Tim, she died too young, but she died doing something she believed was important. Stories emerged about her leadership, her bravery, and her dedication to her team. Here she is talking about them not long before she was killed. My big concern is, is for my crew, so I guess it's a... Uh... Um, the, the big pressure's on me is if, if I make a call and it's the wrong call, so I won't know that till I do it, and then you just hope for the best after, I guess. So that, that, for me, that's my biggest concern. I know my guys know what to do. I got no worries with them. Her team also had a tremendous amount of respect for their leader. It all helped Sally and Tim cope, as well as Nicola's two sisters, Victoria and Kate. But as they grieved, they decided they wanted to do something more. It was almost like she was the, the poster child for the play. <laughs> and so they thought about Papua New Guinea. Because as happenstance would have it, Nicola was actually born there. This was her birth announcement. When we lived on the Trobe, she was the only white child there. Blonde hair and uh, yeah. white skin, she was sort of a magnet. Tim and Sally were teaching there at the time, until they moved back to Canada when Nicola was three, their little blonde wonder was a bit of a local celebrity. And she was fearless. I remember once I went down to the village to pick her up after school and um, she was sitting there, she was what, two and a half, with a coconut and a, a bush knife, a machete, like almost as big as she was, cracking this coconut. The whole community kind of adopted her, didn't they? Yes, she was able to walk around at will and just find people to talk to and find people to play with. But their memory also includes the fact that Papua New Guinea could also be a dangerous place, especially at night with very little lighting. It led to an idea to help change that in Nicola's memory, and the Light Up Papua New Guinea program was born. Um, will this one work? I, I think right? that'll, that'll be great, yeah. It, it, now, it'll... close to nine years later, Sally is heading back. She's heading over there on her own. Yeah. Uh, are you concerned about that at all? Or she's, she, she's pretty used to being a world traveler. Oh, yeah, she's, she's used to being there, and she's with friends, and uh, both with, traveling with friends, and when, with, when she gets there, there's people we know. 
It's almost 15,000 kilometers across continents and oceans to what used to be home. It's a place Sally remembers well, and they certainly remember her. Welcome to Papua New Guinea. And of course, Nicola. I'm Jones Metusela Elijah. I'm the training coordinator for the National Department of Education in Papua New Guinea. Jones was one of the young people fascinated with little Nicola. Here they are over 30 years ago playing on the beach. Nicholas Goddard was a very charming little girl who always sits on my lap while I'm doing my school work. And everywhere I go, Nicola fo follows me and I carry around the school. Good morning. And everywhere Sally goes, she's treated like a celebrity. We thank you, we thank you for your presence this morning. Many people remember her and the kindness that was second nature to the young teacher from Canada. But I want to thank you for helping me when I was just a little kid, you know. And it's my pleasure to see you and thank you in person for helping me. Oh, that's that's yeah. lovely. Thank you very much for welcoming us to your place. But this trip is about the project. Now almost 10 years old. It's about assessing if there's more to be done here. Two people from the University of Prince Edward Island have traveled here with Sally. Wayne Peters, Director of Student Experience. Papua New Guinea is here. Canada is here. Do you know if, ever, if the load ever gets too much for the generator? and solar engineer Andrew Swingler. One drum for three whole nights. I have a specific curiosity about how uh, we might be able to bring solar power, solar lighting uh, to, to improve, uh, improve the situation that might be happening here. Solar lights? Yes. But a lot has changed here in recent years as well. It's not only this house that we have light, but yes. we've supplied other houses. How many of these have you installed, these uh, systems? This is only one in here. Yes. And there's other one at the school. Yes. And there are some more in other schools. Beyond the foundation's work here, many more people now have access to solar systems, the ability to buy and install their own in more remote areas. And on this trip, it's all helped Sally to decide walking on the beach Nicola used to play on, on the very day that is her birthday, that perhaps it's time to move on. We've kind of come to the end of what we can do with that project. It's a wonderful legacy and it's a great, it's something to be proud of. So many memories here, everywhere you look, eh? Yeah. Back in Charlottetown, Sally will remember her trip, perhaps her last, for some time. And she shares with me an incredible number, the number of people from a tiny island nation who've been helped as part of Nicola's legacy. The last count we had was about 1.8 million people now have access to light in the evenings in clinics and, and birthing centers in the country. Thanks to this memory. Thanks to this. But it's not only that. There are so many ways she has now been remembered, from a Coast Guard ship at sea, to scholarships in two universities, to schools that carry her name. In fact, this fall, Sister Victoria is publishing a book they hope will be used in the schools to remember Nicola and what she stood for. Its preface was written by fellow soldier Major Jamie Phillips. She was fit, formidable, and authoritative. I was in awe of her. But she was also brilliant, compassionate, and human. She was all of us. This book is about what shaped her into the exceptional person and leader that she was. It's a great story well told. May she live on through the words written about her 
and through the enduring love her, of her family, of her friends, family, and soldiers. Isn't that nice? Yeah. The sad irony is that if Nicola hadn't been killed, none of this would have happened. Not that they wouldn't trade it all in in a second to see that smile again. It amazes me the ongoing nature of this. I mean, 10 years on too, more than 10 years on now. Yeah, it's quite a legacy. Uh, it's huge. She it's, won't soon be forgotten. No, and there's something like special in that, I suppose. I mean, it's, um, you know, obviously it'd be much more fun if she was here, yeah. but, um, you know, yeah. given that she isn't, um, this is, it's pretty special that so many people remember her. Perhaps mom puts it best. So many Canadians have contributed to this project that I think it, uh, it, it, it's been a great, a great, uh, I was gonna say healing process for us, but it certainly focused us in and trying to make sense out of her death. I think Nicola would be pretty proud of what mom and dad and everybody have accomplished in her memory. Red Sharon, CBC News, in Charlottetown.